In a sense, it's not really surprising that you've got the rates that we have for the for the police. I think we've seen that over the years with various, uh, um, like local surveys, whether they are by researchers uh, or they are uh, Afrobarometer and so forth. But I think the really surprising thing when you look at the the contact rates and the prevalence rates is that of the National Intelligence Bureau. Right. When you look at it, they have 0.3% contact, which is even high for an agency like that. We are talking about the equivalent of, I mean, uh, MI5 or, uh, I mean, if you mm-hmm. were to extrapolate from that for the national population of 31 million, and you're talking about 0.3%, that's quite high levels of contact that people have with an agency like this. But not only that, we have been told that 21% of those who had contact with an agency that is responsible for uh, countering threats to national security, organized yeah. crime, uh, drug trafficking, uh, financial yeah. crimes, but more importantly, That's terrorism, true. which is a major issue in our region, 21% of them paid bribe. That is quite astonishing. Yeah, it's quite alarming. Um, <laughs> it's really alarming uh, to have that. Of course, we, we have to try and find out what's the nature, who are exactly these uh, individuals, what's the nature of the contact and so forth. But on the face of it, I think that's the most significant thing in the report as I, 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 I read it. I mean, the issue of um, uh, education and so forth, I think that's really not surprising because corruption is a crime of elites. It's not a crime of uh, my mom in Gwazanti and Shumo or the average farmer. <laughs> Corruption is a crime of the elite. And therefore, it shouldn't be a surprise that uh, people with more education uh, are the ones who are paying most of the bribes or even are the ones who are in positions to be able to elicit these bribes. We are told that 60% or so of the bribes are, uh, if you like, initiated by public officials uh, and, and so forth. So I think that that's, that would be my my initial comment. That there isn't. I mean, it's, it's really great to have had such a large survey. I think almost fifteen thousand people being yes. surveyed to 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 look at these things across different contexts. But I think our uh, if um, of course when we look at the police, they don't yeah, which have is what I was be... coming to. And since you've raised the police, you you've done quite a bit of work on the police. You 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 understand them perhaps a bit more. They should not be happy to be perennial leaders on this league table? No, they shouldn't. But I think it's also the case that even if they were not top of the league, we should still be concerned. Because if you look at the police, if you are, in, if you are concerned about the rule of law, you are concerned about human rights, social justice, you are concerned about uh, what role the police can play in any counter-terrorism, uh, counter-corruption uh, strategy, you will be concerned that they themselves are involved in, in corruption. Indeed, when you look at the report, it tells us that only 3% of those who uh, paid bribes uh, reported. But then when they were asked that would they have, if they had a chance to report, to which agency would they do that? They mentioned the police. Mm-hmm. The police were the, the top agency, I think 60% or so, I've forgotten the figure, but if you look at it, the police were the agency that people would have liked to report or said they would report to. But we have a counter, uh, counter um, corruption strategy or architecture that doesn't really see the police as, if you like, crucial. Okay, They don't play such a, a crucial role. The police themselves don't collect data on corruption. They don't publish data on corruption. If you look at their crime statistics, they do not include corruption that has been reported to them and so forth. And yet, if you, apart from probably the Ministry of um, Health, Education, the police are the one agency that is effectively everywhere across the country. And so if they themselves could deal with the issue of corruption, they could play a really critical role in the overall uh, attempt to, to address the problem in, in, in the country. Just set something in context for me as somebody who analyzes data sets. When you read that, and this is for just my uh, viewers and the listeners, that based on this, the prevalence of bribery in Ghana is 26.7%, meaning that 
one out of four people who had contact with a public official in the 12 months prior to the survey reported having been asked to pay a bribe by a public official or asked to pay one but refused to do so. How bad is that or how, what kind of performance would that be in your estimation? I think it's, it's bad, but um, again, I think when it will, I mean, one of the reasons we are concerned about corruption is, uh, I mean, the points mentioned earlier, the issue of development, uh, its impact on economic development, uh, what corruption means for organized crime, a couple of years ago, the UNODC produced a report showing strong connections between corruption and organized crime, terrorism, and so forth. So we are concerned about that and so forth. But the issue cannot really be a question of prevalence. It has to be, the focus has to be on the seriousness or the volume. And it's what we get when we look at um, the audit service reports because over there we are looking at high level corruption or so-called grand corruption. That should be something that is of major concern to us. And there's a sense in which uh, uh, both the petty corruption, because some of these that we are talking about might be just petty corruption rather than, if you like, the more serious uh, uh, cases. Uh, of course, there is a connection between them, but I think we need to, this report just encourages us to probe further, to look at what exactly is the context of these of these bribes, how much was it? I mean, it provides us some indication of how much people paid. But again, as you can see, I mean, um, if you were to compare, I think, a Ghana with countries within the same, I feel like, band of development, yes, this seems really serious. Uh, but my focus would be more on what type of corruption this is, whether this is largely petty corruption. I mean, 5 billion seems like a lot, but I mean, the audit service is telling us last year, I think 17 billion uh, cities or so was lost. That, that's something that should really be of, of concern to us. And finally on this, I'm staying with the, I'm reading, it says, there's no difference in the prevalence of bribery in rural and urban areas of Ghana. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think, I mean, when we talk about how do we tackle corruption, one of the issues that we often, or why it, it happens, one of the issues we often highlight is just poor supervision. And you can imagine that if you are a public official in the rural areas uh, with power that uh, people don't understand, uh, with very weak supervision, it becomes very easy for uh, for you to abuse that that authority. So uh, yes, that's a little surprising. But um, again, if a country is corrupt, there's no reason to believe that some sectors, some uh, geographic areas, will be insulated from that corruption. Uh, it it tells you is something of a I don't know a pandemic or epidemic. <laughs> uh, yeah.